I'm moving a little quickly for ya. I'm practicing my snowboarding. <laughs> yeah. I was watching the snowboarding on the Olympics. Some people call them the Olympics. But that's because I think they originated in Ireland. <laughs> well, people in Ireland, they put the letter O in front of everything like... I want to watch the Olympics. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'll just watch the Olympics, thank you. <laughs> I was watching the Olympics and it was awesome. USA, USA, USA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, thanks a lot. I remembered what country I was from. <laughs> but it was awesome because, you know, I was watching the competitors and there's a genuine feeling of camaraderie. <laughs> In front, you know when I was watching Lindsay Vaughn and she was watching the other girls uh, who were falling over and she was genuinely concerned like the beautiful snow angel she is. <laughs> like if I was in a skiing competition and the other people were falling over, I'd be like, hell, <laughs> bitch. That's right, I said it. Uh oh, uh oh, oh, the crocodilio cussed. That's right. That's right. You know why? Because this crocodilio is a bad crocodilio. <laughs> and what happens is when a bad crocodilio gets excited, a bad crocodilio tends to use naughty words. <laughs> I'm sorry if I upset your delicate sensibilities. <laughs> but if your sensibilities are so delicate, what are you doing up at this time of night? <laughs> Maybe you should be getting some sleep so you can wake up in the morning and oppress other people with your sanctimonious whining. <laughs> I'm in a good mood because America is kicking ass at the Olympics. I'll see you later. Bye! The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, sponsored by Ford. Drive one. genuine applause leaves me breathless. Why, it doesn't seem to in any way fake at all, it seems like. It's just like all the other shows, genuine warm applause for a beloved American entertainer. Thank you, everybody. Yes, beloved. That's right, I said beloved about myself. Oh, guess what? What? Invisible sidekick. <laughs> it's a great day for America, that's what it is. Yeah. Actually, it is. It is. It is a great day for America. I, we are kicking ass at the Winter Olympics. Take that rest of the world. Take that. <laughs> 
We won six medals on Wednesday. I never thought I would catch the Olympic fever. Because, like, I, at the first I was like, eh, I don't know. And Monday night I felt a little tingle in the nether regions, but... I assumed it was just my usual February thing, you know. Squirrels in my pants. Because they hide their nuts there for the winter. <laughs> Anyway, no, I've got the Olymp I've come down with a full-blown case of the Olympic fever. We should probably have a graphic. Do we have a graphic? Come on, let's go. Yeah! Olympic fever, Olympic badlands. Yeah, you're right. No, here's what happened. Here's what happened. Here's how I caught the Olympic fever. Last night, I'm flipping through the channels. Uh, well, the three that I have, and I. <laughs> <laughs> I was flipping through the channels with it. Anyway, I ended up on the Olympics, and I thought, well, this is great. I'll put myself to sleep with some icy clog hopping. But no, I saw two amazing performances. Sean White and Lindsay Vaughan. Weren't they sensational? I mean, sensational! I watched, I watched the, uh, the downhill skiing first. I watched uh, Lindsay Vaughan. Do we have a picture of Lindsay Vaughan? Look at that. There you go. That, no. That's a lovely looking woman, isn't she? <laughs> She makes me wish I was snow. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, no, it was only two weeks ago she crashed in a training run and she bruised her shin and she could barely walk. And I'm not making this up. The doctors wrapped cheese on her shin. Cheese! <laughs> to reduce the swelling and increase its deliciousness. Cheese! <laughs> Would have, I would have given it up right there. I'd be like, ah, I'm injured. Of course, I get injured when I make a snow angel, but yesterday... <laughs> but yesterday, still in pain, Lindsay won the gold. Now, would a French skier do that with cheese on their leg? <laughs> Why, of course not. <laughs> Who cares about the middle? I have brie on my leg. <laughs> I am going to take my leg brie and go and have a snack with my... My friends and I, we will discuss the universe, and I no longer care about skiing. <laughs> the women's course was very dangerous last night. I was scared just watching it. Everybody going everywhere. It was unpredictable and mushy, and that was just Bob Costas. Then I started watching it. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I like Bob Costas. <laughs> oh, it's too late now. It's out. Now we're enemies forever. Anyway, a lot of skiers got really hurt on that women's downhill course yesterday. Look, look at this clip. Yeah. I know. Ice spiders. Ice spiders. Ice spiders. Yes. Who saw that coming? Anyway, I watched the, the women's downhill, and then I, after that I watched the snowboarding halfpipe, which is amazing. That Sean White kid is amazing. They, you see when he did that 1080 backtrack half-calf venti McJigger thing? <laughs> it's like I nearly pooped myself. And then, and then he did another one, and I, then I definitely pooped myself. <laughs> That's only because I'm old. Anyway, now look, I know I come out here uh, at night and I complain about young people with their non-aching hips and their functioning memories, but I take it all back. <laughs> You're okay with me, young people, except that guy in Twilight. He's a creepy twink. Now, uh, wait, now wait. Now wait, you should know I'm talking about the werewolf one, not the gorgeous one with the sticky up hair. <laughs> Which I think now that makes me the creepy twink. <laughs> Anyway, Sean White was great, I thought. He's called the Flying Tomato. That's his nickname. It's not a fair nickname, though, because his hair's actually a bit more carroty coloured. Have you a picture of Sean White? Oh, come on! That's not Sean. That's not Sean. That's Carrot Top. That's a, he's another fine entertainer. No, do we have a real picture of Sean White? No, Larry, well, look at that kid. Look at that. I, th I think he, that kid is very cool. Now, for me, that's saying something because I'm a skier. Well, I call myself a skier, but... It's a bit like Lindsay Lohan calling herself a lesbian, or... <laughs> or John Mayer calling himself a musician. What, what I'm saying is... No, wait, wait, wait. What I'm trying to explain is that I dabble in it, but I'm not that good. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, today... 
Today what happens is that some people are making a fuss because NBC didn't bleep out the cuss words last night. After Sean White won the gold, you know, someone was cursing, they were all in it. And I'm thinking, this kid risked his life to win a gold medal. Literally, risked his life to win a gold medal. And people are upset because he dropped, uh, dropped an F-bomb. And I'm like, guess what, everyone? <laughs> Athletes use the F-word when they win a gold medal. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something else. Let me tell you something else. They use it a lot more when they don't win the gold medal. What's wrong with everybody? Listen, I, as a parent, I have no problem if my kid hears a few F-bombs every four years. Actually, that's a pretty good example. Because I can say to him, son, if you ever win a gold medal, you can swear all you want. I'll be swearing right there with you. If you don't win it, ah, but if you win it... <laughs> Anyway, look, I'm old. I want to be angry at young people, but I'm watching the Olympics last night and I realised there are many American young people who are magnificent and fearless and driven to things no one even knows is, is possible yet. And, and to me, that is the definition of cool. These people are cool. Now, of course, I have now ruined it by, because if I think snowboarding is cool, it is by definition no longer cool. <laughs> So sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> the kids are already on to something else. Snowboarding is lame now that Grandpa likes it. We're going to do something. We're going to do something freaky and annoying just to piss you off. It's called ice dancing. <laughs> you win this time, young people. But I'll be back to chase you off of my lawn. <laughs> well done, you magnificent bastards. I'll see you in a minute. Spanish word of the day. Today's word is nieve. Nieve. I missed the Spanish word of the day. I think I, I, I didn't quite catch it. What was the Spanish word of the day, uh, the day again, senorita? Nieve. Nieve. Thank you. <laughs> And no, I'm not sleeping with her. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not! <laughs> Leave me alone! What? <laughs> no! <laughs> anyway, this is the show where nieve is the Spanish word of the day. Snow. And uh, we've got, because everybody's got Olympic fever here at the show. When I say everybody, me. <laughs> But I'm not the only person with Olympic fever. You know who's also got terrible Olympic fever? Morgan Freeman. Oh. He has! <laughs> Take a look at this. Morgan Freeman's Guide to the Winter Olympics. If the Winter Olympics are a party, figure skating can sometimes be the annoying chick who always wants to play charades with wacky costumes, classical music, and more sequins than a gay parade. It's sometimes hard to keep sight of the reason why we love figure skating in the first place. Watching people fall flat on their asses. Oh, sweet mother of mercy, there is nothing better than a Ukrainian rent boy in bell-bottom stretch pants going ass over Tika. Or watching a she-dwarf catch an edge and take a dive, coming up crying those little midget tears. That's it. Go ahead. Cry it out, bitch. Ah, uh, Morgan Freeman, he loves the Winter Olympics. <laughs> hey, you know what I was thinking? You know, for those of you who have been watching the show for a couple of years now, uh, you'll know I love the movie uh, Ghost Rider. Uh, this is the skeleton from the movie Ghost Rider. And then I was... <laughs> it's not the actual one. <laughs> this is... <laughs> this is not... It's not actually Nicolas Cage. This is not Nicolas Cage. <laughs> like, you know, that would be amazing if it was. be like... Yeah, I, I wish I had been more careful with my money. <laughs> but it's not, it's not Nicholas Cage. I used to be married to Elvis's daughter. 
<laughs> I know it looks like it might be Nicolas Cage wearing his uh, Ghost Rider costume, but it's not. This is just a facsimile of the skeleton with its skull on fire that stars in that movie, which makes it the best movie ever made. <laughs> Uh, this skeleton, its skull actually isn't on fire, as even in this bad lighting you can probably tell. <laughs> anyway, I was thinking about this because Helena Bonham Carter was on the show last night and the skeleton was here. And then this, I, she said, do you have a sidekick? And I, well, not really, but I have a skeleton. And then I put it next to her and I thought, we'll make a sidekick. <laughs> we'll make one. We can build, build our own sidekick. A robot skeleton sidekick. For me. What do you think? We can make our own robot. Maybe we can call in experts to help us make a robot skeleton sidekick. And it can say things like, Craig, you're the man. <laughs> That's cold, buddy. He can say something like that. This could be a new dawn in American late night television that doesn't have any money. <laughs> I think it's a good idea. And I told it to the producers today and they said, no chance, which means it was a good idea. <laughs> so, stay tuned, loyal robot skeleton people who enjoy robot skeletons on TV. Cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on this. Um, obviously we've got a ways to go. And maybe we'll construct a temporary robot skeleton sidekick until we get a full-blown one. <laughs> you know, like when you uh, burst a tire on your car and you've got the little one that gets you as far as the shop where they can put a new tire on? Well, that'll be our robot skeleton. <laughs> until we get a... You're seeing this show being made as it actually happens! <laughs> I... I know! <laughs> It's like that show in history, you were there. <laughs> well, he actually was. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. Everybody. everybody, welcome back to the email Twitter segment of the show where I answer emails and Twitters from all over the world. Please, play the jingle, everybody. Twitter, Twitter, tweeting, tweeting, ephemeral, ephemeral, bleeding, bleeding, blue and web, face code, quit zone, ask mode, checks the tweets, 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 and also emails. package. All right, first up is an email. This is from Michelle in Battle Creek in Michigan. She says, Dear Craig, last week I caught my boyfriend trying on my girly high-heeled shoes. <laughs> do all men secretly do this just to see what it's like? Sure. <laughs> yeah, sure we do. <laughs> Michelle, you know the answer to this question. It's not me you want, it's Dr. Phil. All right, here's a, here's a Twitter. This is from New Brunswick in Canada. Canada? <laughs> Canadians, they're here and they're like, wait, he didn't read the email from Canada, but he did mention Canada. So all's well that ends well. This is from uh, Aaron in Lansing in Michigan. Two from Michigan. I wonder if Erin wears high-heeled shoes. Oh, no, it's probably a girl. Erin says, uh, Craig, are you available to babysit this coming weekend? I can't. I've got to go to my sister's. Uh, this is from Eric in Boise in Idaho. Uh, I've been there. I've got nothing to tell you about it, but I've been there. <laughs> Eric says, uh, Craig, why don't cats get hiccups? They do. Cats do get hiccups. So your question is wrong. <laughs> I'm judging you, Eric and Boise. <laughs> judging, judging, judging. 
Not as much as I would judge you if you were putting on ladies' high heel shoes. <laughs> Just to see what it feels like. Just to see what it feels like. Honey, I had sex with a man just to see what it feels like. It doesn't mean I'm gay. I just wanted to see what it feels like. I see. Right, okay. Do all men do this? Yes, of course we do. <sighs> <laughs> This is from Blake in Inglewood in Colorado. Blake says, Hi Craig, I've been asked to be the school mascot, which is cool. Is it, Blake? <laughs> but in order to do it, I have to wear the animal costume. It's a turtle, and I am afraid bullies will beat me up. <laughs> do you think it's worth the risk? <laughs> sure. Why don't you put on the turtle costume and a pair of ladies' high heel shoes <laughs> and walk right up to those bullies and say, Hey, I have a right to be who I am. <laughs> this is from Lamar in Kiowa in Colorado. Uh, it says, Hi, Craig. Wasn't the Dutch girl who said goodnight at the end of tonight's show the same girl who had to go to the bathroom at the beginning of the show last night? Yes. Yes, she was also the Spanish girl uh, tonight. What we did was, there was a girl that had to go to the bathroom and then we made fun of her and I felt terrible, so we let her say goodnight on the show. And then, the next night, we said, well, she said goodnight so well, we'll let her say goodnight as a Dutch girl. And so she said goodnight as a Dutch girl last night and we dressed her up as a Spanish girl tonight and she said the Spanish word of the day and now everybody thinks I'm sleeping with her. <laughs> I'm not, of course. I just wanted to see what it feels like. <laughs> we'll be right back, everybody. Welcome back. My first guest tonight is a beautiful and talented actress. I am not sleeping with her. <laughs> She's a good friend of the show. Please welcome the adorable Jennifer Tilly, everybody. Jennifer Tilly. Just fell off of my back. Oh, it's the microphone it's here. The microphone. I'll fix it. Yes. Yeah, I'll just put so it in. I was backstage and somebody came back and they said, We have a little note for you from oh, yeah. Craig. And I was very excited because Valentine's Day just finished and yeah. I opened it up. Your microphone. It's a picture of a cheap whore <laughs> in cheap $29 payless shoes stepping on a Hollywood star. And inside, I thought it would say, Hi, this is Craig. Step into my secret office that has a couch. But it says, Welcome back, Chandler. And love Craig. That's really impersonal, isn't it? No, it's not. It's horrible. I don't even think he wrote that. Is that I even did your write that. handwriting? I did, I, did, I, did. I did. I'll show you. Look, I'll, I'll show you. I've got my. My friends no. would always give me a hard time because it would be their birthday. It would be 20 years I'd known them. I'd give them a card. They think I'd be saying something really personal, like how important they were to me. And I say, "Happy birthday, Jennifer." I think that says it all. So really, welcome back, Jen. Love Craig. That says it all. I think I can get seven dollars and ninety-nine cents on eBay for this. <laughs> Oh, but you don't understand. I, I didn't want you to feel like I was coming on to you. No, it's like that's every all time right. I talk that's to a woman. All right. No, it's just That's I, all right. I'm gonna put it here. You can recycle it when you have another guest oh, named Jennifer. I feel oh. You can give it to her. Is that impersonal? Oh. It is like sort of one size fits all. Oh, I'm s i am feel awful. Can I get you a gift? Uh yes. Well uh, yes. All right then. Well, I, government bonds are always no, always I've got, coming I've got in. Something handy. Here. I'm sure I'll have something in my I'm uh, sure it's something gift. he got for free. No, he no, 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 no. I, I bought look. Somebody's like Oh, extra large size Trojans. Uh, These are for. Oh, Feather! Ah, uh, Feather, oh, see? This is yes. nice. I guarantee you at the end of the show, the producer is going to come running up to me and say, Can we have the Feather back? No, 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 don't you dare. I know don't this is dare. a low budget show. It anyway, is. thank you. And look, the te the, is, there's a teddy bear. How on was it? your Valentine's Day, Craig? V very nice. Did your wife put on a little outfit and prance all around? Every day. Every day. <laughs> You know, I never did get that little outfit 
thing, you know? Oh, no, that's because you're a woman and I'm a man. And see, men, we love women in little outfits. You're wearing a little outfit but now. What does, no, I mean, I'm talking about, you know, where you have sex and you're like, oh, could you please dress up as a dental assistant or something like that? Dental assistant? It's like, what do you hope to accomplish by that? You think that perhaps it, it oh, this isn't my wife. It's a dental assistant. No, like, she's in no, disguise? No. Like, my boyfriend, we're at the point now. We've been together for about six years. And so we're at the point where I'm a little bit boring to him. No. And, you know, when you try to spice things up, like Valentine's Day. <laughs> Valentine's Day, you're like, oh, I'm going to put on some fancy Valentine's Day underwear. And he'll be like, it's not Jennifer, it's a hot girl. But he's just like, all right, Jennifer, I know it's you. You just decorated your droopy bits with a little oh, bit of red lace. Oh, Jennifer, lace. Jennifer. <laughs> Boyfriend once, and you know, I mean, I've, I've had many, many boyfriends, as you know. You were not one of them. But he <laughs> <laughs> on my bucket list. Okay, so anyway, I had a boyfriend once. He came to visit me on the set, and I was wearing a blonde wig. And at lunchtime, you know, when you're working as an actress, you're really exhausted. It's hard work. It's so terrible. You have to pretend to be someone else. People are bringing you coffee. It's so, awful. That's right. <laughs> to make out with your co-stars yeah, yeah, on screen all and all. So my boyfriend came and he was really turned on by the red wig. And he insisted on my you said, lunch you, wait, hour... Wait, wait, wait. You said it was a blonde wig. So there's a blonde wig and a red wig or a blonde wig in your hair? It was a blonde wig. Did I say red? You're yeah. not listening to me. I didn't say I am that listening I. to you. You're not listening to yourself. He's not getting paid enough to listen to the gas. No. All he does is listen to the little inner monologue in his oh, head. Oh, stop it now. He's like, ooh, Jennifer would look hot with red hair. And then he's going down this that is, road. Did she say red? Then did she not say red? She she realizes said. I'm halfway through a story and he is not the All right, all right, come on. So anyhow, on. my boyfriend goes, hey, I know it's your lunch hour and all, and you really want to eat that big plate of spaghetti and have a nap, but let's have sex. And I was like, oh, all right. So we go on my trailer, we have sex, you know, it takes about three and a half minutes. And my boyfriend was really, really excited. He was going, I feel like I'm cheating on you. Now that's a red flag, right? When your boyfriend is having sex with you, you're in disguise and he's feeling like he's cheating on you and he's very excited. Yes. Red flag. Turned yes. out he was cheating on oh. me. Constantly, so it's just another day on the job for him. But for me, <laughs> it was sad. It was the realization that brunette Jennifer is not enough. It's not enough. No, it is enough, Jennifer. What, what color enough. hair does your, your wife have? Blonde hair. Everybody likes blondes. I don't. No, 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 no. It's just that they're easy to spot. No, I read it in a cab. I read an article. Um. Oh, you know what? I was at Cavalli the other day. This what, is what's, you were Cavalli. Where? What's this that? Is, it's a store. It's where I got this dress. It's adorable. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So I was in there, and I did not realize how beloved you are. I know you are beloved by me. I You're know. beloved by your studio audience. <laughs> applaud and then they applaud. There's no applaud they're like, they're we're, applaud sign. we're part of show business. This is applaud and we're the best applauders ever. You guys are the best applauders ever. No, but, knock it off. We don't have an applaud sign. But you know, at the top what? of the show, you were saying, I am beloved. And you said it facetiously, sort of ironically, self-deprecatingly. That's part of your charm. You're deconstructing my deconstruction. Yes. I don't like this. <laughs> But you are, because I was in Cavalli, and I said, I'm buying this dress for um, the Craig Ferguson show. And I said it quite loudly, two or three times, because, you know, I was hinting that I should get a discount, since I'm going to wear their dress on national television. And that beautiful dress it is, too, Thank Jungle Lady. Thank yes, you. look at Thank that. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Kisses me up. So, wow. anyway, they didn't get the hint. I never get a discount. And, but they were very excited. They were like, Craig Ferguson. And one of the people working there said, he's an impish scamp. And I was, I was a little worried because that was the 200 pound bodyguard, the, like the security guard that was sitting at the um, front door. But then the other girls were saying, he's wonderful. And then another girl goes, what are you going to do when he asks you all those weirdo questions? And I didn't realize that you ask weirdo questions. You never stop for long enough for me to ask you any weirdo questions. to give me a discount for wearing a dress on your show. Well, I think but, that's oh, awful. Oh, wait, they wanted... Yes? They wanted to know what Craig smells like. What do I smell like? You smell like strawberries, 
and despair. You know me so well. It's a lethal combination. Uh, yeah, the girls find it very attractive. Yeah, so We're completely out of time, Jennifer. Oh, wait, show the picture. Show All right, picture. I'm showing the picture. I have an art show coming up where I'm totally naked. My friend Paul Robinson is having this art show. Right. This is me. Um, if you come to the art show, I'm five feet tall, and you can see my nipples. Like, if you're at home, don't say, oh. I wish we had a high definition TV. It's all out of focus, standards and practices. Show the other one. I'm naked in the other one too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, this is okay. This is me. I'm totally blurred out, but actually, um, it's art because there's sunflowers, there's blurring. You see, I'm wearing my two hundred thousand dollar Manola Blonic alligator shoes, so that makes it classy. I'm not totally naked, but it's May 11th. Come to Los Angeles and see it. Oh, um, and also too, I have a movie coming out. I know they cut a clip, but there's no time. But it's called Plus One, and it's coming out one day at a theater near you. I hope that's intriguing enough to make you all stampede to the theater. to the Late Late Show with Jennifer Tilly. I'm your guest host for the evening. <laughs> She's adorable, though. Come on. Uh, my next guest is a reigning four-time... He is the reigning four-time uh, Sprint Cup champion for the NASCAR folks. Take a look at this. Tomorrow, haven't you? Yes, we have a race, and I'm thinking that maybe you should not offer caffeinated drinks backstage. Really? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Jennifer was on, I mean, on the rev no, chip, she's we would say. like that all the time. That's fantastic. All the time. And actually, I kind of like it. Do you like a woman who's pushy and forward like that? Yeah, at times. Yeah? yeah. Are you married? Yes. Yeah, yeah. so uh, you better be careful what you say yeah, right now. Yeah, I'm just realizing that right now. So yeah, 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 that's all right. What about, uh, you're racing tomorrow, are you nervous? Uh, tomorrow's practice and qualifying, right. we race Did Sunday. You? Did you have a crash in practice recently? Uh, yeah, we did at Daytona, yes. Yeah, and that, yeah. that happens. I mean, we're joking before we came on. I mean, you're not really nervous until that moment when you know you're going to hit something at a high rate of speed. Yeah, So, yeah. so there, there's a split second of time there where you're I'm like, nervous. Ah, oh, yeah, damn. Yeah, yeah. And then if you're lucky, if you hit really hard, you don't remember anything. Yeah. That's, that's lucky, is it? Yes. I don't know, man. I quit like this kind of comfortable stationary job that I have where I don't... Well, no, actually, you know, I got a bit nervous here, too, sometimes. Like, when Jennifer was here, I was uh, pretty nervous. She almost had you. She was taking your job. That was she, great. She could take my job. Yeah. She could. Yeah, yeah, no, she could. Now, you know Carl Edwards is a friend of mine. I do. Yeah, so now, uh, you and Carl, you, you don't trash talk or anything like that, do you? Because oh, you, you can't trash talk Carl. Well, we're competitors. Yeah, so I know you're competitors. I, we, but we hate each other when the helmets go on, but outside of that, we're friendly. Right, so you're kind of like gladiators with engines. <laughs> yes, precisely. <laughs> I like that yeah. idea, yeah. Well, now that you have this racing connection, we need you to come to the track. I'd like to come to the track, but you know what kind of worries me about it? The noise. <laughs> yeah, that would be a bad place to go. Yeah, but see, as you can tell from the studio audience, I'm not used to a loud noises. I, uh, <laughs> I like it quiet, like during the monologue. That's the way That's I like it. You know, quiet, the sound of crickets. Crickets, yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, you, a lot of you, you, the NASCAR guys, you travel around all the time. Right. 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 Where, where are you based? Um, for us, our home base for the race shop is in Charlotte, North Carolina. And then I love them. I, I've, I've been to Charlotte, yeah? North Carolina. Yeah, when? yeah. I went. Well, the first time I went, it was uh, early '90s, and I went to a fantastic bar where gentlemen are invited to meet ladies who aren't wearing any clothes. One of those places. <laughs> the shoe show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shoes, yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if it was that. Uh, the, uh, oh. Yeah, it was yeah, it was shoes. There were a lot of shoes. A lot of there. shoes, that's yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah. I was wearing shoes, certainly. 
<laughs> Are you from Charlotte? No, I grew up in actually uh, very close to San Diego in El Cajon, California. Oh, right. Yep. Okay. So I, I've lived in, in North Carolina. I met my wife uh, up in New York, and right. we have an apartment there, and then she's from Oklahoma. So we're kind of all spread. All right. So, and then you settled in, uh, in North Carolina. Yeah, what Charlotte you, is the, kind of the Hollywood, the hub for motorsports, for NASCAR racing. All the right. teams, drivers, everybody's based there. Uh, is, there in, is the rivalry very intense between you guys, or is it kind of manufactured for, you know, for show? Or does we're, it get personal from We really hate each other. Yeah, you do? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I find that rather comforting in a way. Yes. You know, it's, <laughs> we all like the trophies, and then the winner gets the biggest check, and inside of that it breeds a lot of hatred. So. Yeah, well, yeah. I think that's all right. Now, the, the fans uh, of the NASCAR, the, do you actually interact with these people a lot? Because they are, they're really very passionate and committed to you the You say sport. these people. What yeah. do you mean by these people? <laughs> I think you know what I'm saying. I think you know what I'm saying. I'm saying the fans are very passionate uh, and committed very passionate. to the... Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. they are. They, our fans are extremely loyal. I mean, they, they'll come and camp out for four or five days at a racetrack and support right. us. And, and our sport wouldn't be where it is today without the great Absolutely fans. Absolutely not. That's there true. are some crazy, crazy fans. Right. Um, yeah. But you need that, though, for a sport. Uh, we do. It's, it's great. I mean, we, uh, it, our sport, we're, we're there because we're in front of so many eyes at the track. Our smallest venue seats, I think, 90,000 people. That's, and then that's, you have the viewing like audience. Here. Yeah. <laughs> At the Daytona 500, we just competed out last week, and we had like 200 plus thousand people that were there. So. Do you ever watch the uh, Formula One guys in in Europe and think I, I would I would quite fancy trying that a bicycle with a huge engine on it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I really enjoy the cars, but the politics and the whining and crying over there with the F1 drivers, I'm not not a big fan. Yeah, of. well, yeah. it's it's Europe, buddy. You yeah. Know, yeah. <laughs> you can't have Europe without the whining and crying. It's exactly. not the same. It's not the same. You're not getting the full European experience. You know. <laughs> Because everything in Europe, of course, is based not just on the actual sport itself, but the hatred that exists between the countries. Yeah, yeah very true. Yes, yeah, it yeah. does drive a lot. So of it's things. not just the you know the the individual involved; it's the years of history, and you know. I have a friend that races uh, Max Pappas, Italian driver. Yes. Um, his son was going to be born potentially within a month's period of time of the 24 Hours of Le Mans, which is a great endurance race. Right. There was no way his Italian son was going to be born in France. So he wouldn't allow his wife to travel a month before the race. Right. A month before actually her, her, uh, her cutoff time to travel, just, just to speak to that point. Just so to be careful that his Italian there was son gonna, would... Yeah, there was not going to be a French child in his house. Let me, let me ask you this. Yeah. That's some dedication. I can't get into that for legal reasons, but I... Uh... <laughs> Let me ask you this, if you badly hurt your shin before a race, right? yes. would, would you use cheese, cheese. to, to uh, help your leg? Because, you know, uh, um, Lindsay Vaughn uh, right. hurt her leg before the big down. Is that part of her treatment? Cheese. She used cheese. cheese on her leg and won the gold. Won the gold, Jimmy. Right or wrong, everybody's going to cheese up now. Yeah, I mean, yeah we're going to win that's, gold. Everybody's going to cheese. Yeah. It's, that's the way forward. You gotta, so I do you cheese be, before you come I, to I, I, I cheese the minute I get out here. The, <laughs> as, as soon as the, the cameras start, the cheese begins. <laughs> the cheese <goes. laughs> But the, uh, the, the, you, I guess you have to be careful because, like, if you rub a topical cream or, or some kind of something that contains a banned substance on it, you might not even know. Do they test you guys as well? For, yeah, yeah. They're very strict with that? Yeah, they have a uh, substance abuse policy, definitely, in right. our sport. Yep. But cheese is okay. Yeah, I have not seen cheese on, on the list. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, and you'd probably use American cheese anyway. Wouldn't be, uh... <laughs> you got a I don't even know where to go with this. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're out of time anyway. But listen, uh, uh, good, luck at, uh, good luck at the race, and, and it's, it's delightful. Delightful to meet you, and uh, and come back and see us soon. Love Be careful. To. Thanks yeah. for having me on the and show. Remember and remember, go to the bathroom before the race starts. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. important. <laughs> but then you smell like dirty old cheese when you yeah, get yeah. in the car if you don't. So. And we come full circle. First sir. <laughs> Sleeping with her. <laughs> I'm not sleeping with her. <laughs> Even although 
I think the very expensive CBS wig is very attractive. <laughs> they've let you down, darling. They've let you down. <laughs> Will you stop? Stop waving. I'll tell you when. I am the temporary robot skeleton sidekick. Who's not really a robot. But we're working on it. <laughs> right then. Well, I think the show went pretty well tonight. What do you think? Good. Uh, <laughs> all right, now. Now. Buenas noches. Buenas noches.